In a previous video, we've looked at how to create a footprint from scratch, but with the help of the IPC footprint wizard, you can create just about any IPC compliant component by entering a bit of information. Since we're going to be adding this footprint to the component that we created earlier in the schematic library, we'll need to make sure that the library is open. As opposed to the approach with Altium 365, the local symbol and footprint are created in separate libraries. So to create this footprint, go to the File menu, select New, Library, then select PCB Library. You'll notice the library environment is nearly identical to the PCB environment, so there's no real learning curve. Make sure that the PCB library and the Properties panel are both open since we'll be using them quite often. They can be found from the Panels button if they're not already open. Our footprint is a standard SOT636 package, so it can be created pretty quickly using the wizard. From the Tools menu, select the IPC Compliant Footprint Wizard. We'll be going through quite a few different pages to define the specifics of the footprint that we're creating. Click Next on the first page, then we'll select SOT23 as the component type then click Next again. Just below the dimensions for the package type, select the SOT236 lead package from the drop-down menu, and you'll notice the footprint preview will change. We'll also check the Generate Step Model Preview option in the lower left corner to add a 3D body. Now the last thing to do on this page is to enter the overall dimensions for the footprint which is found in the components datasheet. You can find these values yourself, but we already have them, so go ahead and enter the same values as we're showing here. Feel free to click on the 3D button in the preview region to see what the footprint is going to look like. Let's click Next to continue. So we've covered the overall dimensions, but now we need to define the pin dimensions. Again, this information is available from the datasheet, but we're providing these values for you. When you're done, go ahead and click Next. For this component, we don't need to make any changes to the heel spacing or round off pitch, so we can click Next two more times. We mentioned earlier that we want our component to adhere to the B-level density, so ensure that it's set to the proper level and click Next. We can click Next three more times since there's no need to change the calculated or default values on these pages. For the silkscreen dimensions, we'll change the line width to 0.15mm and click Next. Now we need to assign the proper information to the appropriate layers. So change each layer drop down to the same values we're showing here for the courtyard, assembly, and component body sections. When you're done, click Next. On the footprint description page, it'll provide you with a suggested name for the footprint if you have the suggested value box enabled. If you're fine with the naming convention, you can go ahead and click Next. Now the footprint destination page will ask you where you want to store your new footprint. You can store it in a new or existing library, but we'll be storing it in the current library that we're working with. We'll also enable the 3D step model option and ensure the embedded option is enabled as well. You can now click Next again and then Finish to complete the footprint and exit the wizard. You'll see the new footprint in the middle of the workspace as well as in the PCB library panel. If you're satisfied with the footprint, you can save this library from the file menu and store it in a convenient location. It's common to store all of your local libraries under one folder for easy access. As mentioned before, we need to add this footprint to our schematic symbol that we've already created. Open the schematic library panel and ensure the MBT symbol is selected and active. In the models region, you'll find the add footprint button and we'll click on it to add the footprint that we just created. Now click on the browse button so that we can search through our libraries for the correct footprint. After clicking Browse, you may not see any available libraries. When you want to use local libraries with Altium Designer, they need to be installed into our workspace. To do this, click on the triple dot icon just right of the library's dropdown. You'll then see a new window with a few different tabs. The Project tab will show you any libraries that are included in a project or that are in the Projects panel. The Installed tab will show you all of the libraries that are currently available regardless of the project you're working on. The Search Path tab isn't commonly used, so we'll focus on the other two for now. From the Installed tab, the miscellaneous libraries are included by default with the Altium Designer installation. From the Install button, let's browse for the PCB library that we just created. You may need to change the file extension for the search filter to be able to see PCB libraries. Select the library, click Open, and now you'll see it included in the available libraries. Let's close this window. The footprint will now be available, select it, and click OK to continue. 
we'll click OK one last time to successfully attach it to our schematic symbol. Since our component is now complete, you can simply save the schematic library and close this tab. You're now set to start using the component that we just created.